Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Ever since I've gotten my R5 cameras and when I was using the Sony A1 in the field, I've been confronted with the question, should I be shooting full RAW or compressed RAW? Because the benefits of the compressed RAW are almost overwhelming. Half the file size, much larger buffer size available, apparently similar image quality, and you can get away with using quite cheap SD cards simply because the files are so small. We all know the saying, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. So where's the catch? Or should we all just be using C-RAW going forward? So far, I've mainly been shooting in full RAW simply because I don't like the idea of giving up potentially a lot of image quality to save a few gigabytes on my hard drive. And secondly, if you're using an R5 in the electronic shutter mode or if you're using the 30 frames per second mode on the A1, you are already compromising your image quality because your RAW files go from a 14-bit RAW file to a 12-bit RAW file. And if you're exposing your images very well in the field and using high ISO, the difference between a 12-bit RAW file and a 14-bit RAW file is not that big. But for instance, if you're underexposing your images a lot or you have dark shadow areas in the image that you have to pull up a lot, you can see a significant difference in the noise levels and the kind of artifacts and color cast that the image might get. So the 14-bit RAW file has a significant advantage in these areas over a 12-bit RAW file. However, there are real, real-life advantages of using the electronic shutters on the R5. They are silent, they're super fast, and they simply give me more consistently sharp images when I shoot birds. So there are definitely advantages why I've decided to most of the time use the electronic shutter in the fastest mode on my R5. And the same, when I had the Sony A1, I also used the 30 frames per second most of the time simply because there are real life advantages of having these high frame rates and getting consistently nice and sharp images. So using these cameras in the 12-bit RAW mode seemed fine as long as you are nailing your exposure. You really don't want to have areas that are too dark because then you can often see a quick increase in the noise levels. So that left me with the decision, should I shoot in full RAW or compressed RAW? And as you can imagine, knowing that I already had to compromise in shooting at 12-bit RAWs instead of 14-bit RAWs, I started to feel a bit hesitant of using C-RAW now on top of using the 12-bit RAWs because I felt like I'm already compromising my image quality and now I have to compromise image quality again potentially. But there are still clear advantages of using C-RAW because on the R5, my typical RAW file is between 50 and 60 megabyte and the C-RAW file, compressed RAW file, is between 20 to 30 megabytes. So significant savings. And the biggest advantage is probably that my buffer size goes from about 55 images, so I can take about 75 images on my CF Express card in a row before buffering out. It jumps up to over 100 images if I'm using C-Roll. So there's a significant advantage there if I'm shooting fast action. And on the Sony A1, it was even more pronounced because the full uncompressed RAW files are well over 100 megabyte, and the compressed RAW files are only about 50, 55 megabytes. The Sony actually has two compressed mods, a lossless compression and a lossy compression where the files are even smaller. So knowing that there are these dramatic differences in file size and that potentially having a larger buffer in certain situations could be very advantageous, I went out and did a few tests and I want to share some of the images with you now that I've taken in the field. Here we have two Cape Baron geese taken on the R5. On the left we have the RAW file and on the right we have the C RAW file. If we zoom in to 100% to these, I feel like it becomes very obvious pretty quickly that both of these pictures look pretty much identical with similar noise levels. And here I have to say that these were taken at relatively high ISO, it's 1600. But looking at the detail levels, and everything, I feel like both files are very comparable. And if I just showed you one of these, you wouldn't be able to just say, yeah, this was raw or zero. The next sample is two Sony files. On the left-hand side, our 100 megabyte full raw. On the right-hand side, our compressed raw. Again, if we zoom in to 100% here, we see very nice details. It's really hard for me 
to say the images look very different or there's more details or less details or more noise or less noise in the file simply because they're so similar and the only thing I can see is that the white balance is different but other than that I think also in the Sony the compressed RAW files actually hold up really well. And then I've gone ahead and taken a few images that were severely underexposed, shot at ISO 1600 of these two Cape Barangis. And then I brightened them back up to see what it looks like if we brighten up the images a lot now. So on the left, we have our full RAW file. On the right, we have our C RAW file. And if we look at these at 100%, I think they look pretty similar again. We want to start nitpicking and say this ever so slightly more noise in the zero file now and the contrast in the black has held up a little bit better on the eye here this on the right hand side of the zero file looks a little bit more washed out with a little bit more noise but all in all i still think these images are actually fairly comparable and just another nice image that i took in zero just to show you that i also photograph other things than geese this is an image that will just come up really nicely when editing, which you can see here now. And if you want to learn all about editing and how you make your images shine and take them from a good raw file to an amazing final image, make sure to check out my masterclass down there in the description that will help you to achieve that goal very well. What I found the most surprising really that side by side, like in the field shots at high ISO, the difference was basically non-existent. Where I could see more of a difference between C raw and raw files was in a more controlled environment where I shot a white flower with a darker background and then really lifted the shadows where the C raw files, the compressed raw files definitely had more noise and a little bit of artifacts and a little bit of banding sometimes compared to the full raw files. If you don't nail your exposure, you will definitely introduce a little bit more noise, color casts, and a bit more banding in your files if you have to pull up a lot of dark areas. So if you nail your exposure, I think you can really get away with shooting C raw and being quite happy about it and not actually compromising too much. So will I use compressed raw all the time going forward now? Probably not, but I will definitely be using it at certain times. And I will actually start to make decisions in the field on the day, depending on the subject and the scene and whether I need a bigger buffer or not, if I'm using C raw or full raw. Because I still think there are image quality advantages to be had by using full raw. So in certain situations, for instance, there's just a bird sitting in front of me with tricky light, I do want to use full raw to get the maximum image quality, but in high action situations where I need a bigger buffer and I don't need the most perfect image quality, I will probably then be happy to use C raw simply because I can have more files on my card and it's just easier to deal with large amounts of files if they're not so big in size. So there's definite advantages to be had, especially when it's about fast action photography or I'm somewhere with birds that I've photographed a lot already, so I don't feel like I need to fill up another extra hard drive with all those images. And by having C raw, I can keep my file size down significantly. So in those situations, I think compressed raw will be very good, but we just have to keep in mind that with C raw, exposure is crucially important. We have to make sure that we expose our images correctly. So at higher ISO levels, and especially if you run some noise reduction, some good noise reduction software, I think the difference between the C raw files and the raw files is very marginal and C raw is a real contender. There doesn't simply seem to be the perfect answer. I'm a little bit less likely to always use C raw because I feel like I'm already compromising with the 12-bit raw files. So now I don't really want to compromise any further on the image quality. So that's something that's just keeps playing in the back of my head when I think about using C raw. So high action, I will definitely use it. Most other times I will probably keep sticking with the full raw simply because I will have a little bit more scope when it comes to the editing process and getting the most out of the images. Just like in this Gen Gen Cockatoo photo where the bird on the left hand side was just a little bit underexposed and I was able to lift the shadows up nicely by shooting in 
full raw. And this would be one image where I would have slight concerns having shot that in C-RAW because I had to lift the dark areas a fair bit and I would have definitely gotten more noise and potentially more artifacts or color cast in the image if I had shot in C-RAW. In saying all that, I think C-RAW or compressed RAW can be a fantastic choice for many of you guys, simply because it comes with a lot of real world advantages. You can have a slower computer, you need less memory cards, or you can have cheaper memory or SD cards. You can have less hard drive space that you need, and all in all, it's just easier to deal with the files. So in real, the real world, there are definite advantages when it comes to working with compressed RAW files. The main thing you have to remember here is that you make sure that you expose your images correctly. Then it can be a really good tool for you. If I was having an R6 with smaller files already, I would probably not use compressed RAW simply because the files are already quite small. And then I feel like the extra savings in file size are not really worth the decrease in image quality simply because the files are already small to begin with. So on the bigger file cameras, I do think compressed RAW can be actually a good option. I will definitely be using it more going forward. What are you guys' thoughts? Are you happy with the savings or are you wanting the maximum image quality? Let me know in the comments. Like I said, personally, I will definitely be using C-RAW more, but not all the time. I really hope this video could shine some light onto the debate. And I was actually quite interested in making this video because for me, I wasn't sure if I want to use C-RAW. I've read a lot of good things about C-RAW, but then in the end, I wasn't sure when I should be using it, should I be using it at all. So hopefully this video helped not just me, but all to you to find your answers. And maybe you're gonna do it like me, use C-RAW in certain situations and then full RAW in other situations. So please make sure to leave me a comment with your thoughts about Ceros, subscribe to my channel, like and share my video and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye guys.